This is the Interstate 210 Bridge in Lake Charles. It's recognized as being one of the 10 most beautiful bridges in the nation. It's the longest steel span ever erected and won the American Institute of Architects Award for Construction. This is Lake Charles. Years and years ago, the community and the lake served as different type bridges. The lake is a bridge between the Gulf of Mexico, when the pirate Jean Lafitte is said to have used local waters to harbor his ships. And the town as a bridge between the south and the beginnings of the west as part of the Spanish trail. Uncounted wagons filled with settlers and their dreams and belongings filed into Texas. This expansion movement through the gateway to the southwest led to the Mexican War. In fact, hostilities became so evident that in 1830, Fort Atkinson was set up in Lake Charles. Lake Charles and the surrounding area to be served by Louisiana Public Broadcasting is a unique mixture of French culture and the wide open spaces of what is simply known as the West. Lake Charles, the gateway, the bridge to the Southwest. The first citizens to settle in the area were a married couple from Bordeaux, France, by way of Virginia, Martin Camersac Le Bleu and his wife. For a while, following their 1771 arrival, they lived in peaceful coexistence with several tribes of Indians. Other pioneers joined them. Among the first of those newcomers was a man named Carlos Salia, a New Orleans Spaniard later changed his name to Charles Salier. He settled near the shores of the lake and in 1803 married one of the Le Bleu daughters, Catherine. And actually this is how the town got its name. Charlie was possessed by a fierce jealousy of his young wife. In his pain and rage, he accused her of being unfaithful. The thought of her with another man threw Charlie into a fit of blind rage. He aimed his gun at her heart and shot the beautiful Catherine. Believing himself to be a murderer, while crazed with fear and grief, he raced to the other side of the lake and took his own life. But you see, what Charlie never knew was that Catherine had clasped her hand over her breast. The ball from the pistol passed through her hand and struck a brooch she was wearing, saving her life. She never remarried but spent the rest of her 75 years in the little cabin Charlie had built for them. In memory of her husband, people began calling the huge body of water Charlie's Lake. Later in 1852, it was known as Charlestown and named the seat of Calcasieu Parish Government. The town was incorporated in 1867 with a population of some 400 persons not counting horses, mules, and chickens. From then on, it was known, as it is today, as Lake Charles. Settlers who came at the turn of the 18th century acquired their property from the Indians, or they homesteaded the Rio Hondo lands, Rio Hondo being that large river which flows into the city, and known today as the Calcasieu River. That word, Calcasieu, by the way, 
comes from the Indian term spelled Q-U-E-L-Q-U-E-S-H-U, which means crying eagle. That river and other waterways provide the city's link with the Gulf of Mexico. In the mid-1920s, far-sighted individuals promoted the sale of local bonds to dredge a deep water channel to the Gulf. It's just 34 miles from Lake Charles to the open sea. That deep water channel connects the port to all parts of the world. At the port, you'll see the loading and unloading by American and foreign ships of goods of all types and description. Jim, tell me, just what does the port mean to Lake Charles and the surrounding area? Jack, we feel like the Port of Lake Charles is actually the most important port in the state of Louisiana as it pertains to serving the needs of the interest in the state of Louisiana. Uh, we serve more of the industry, your paper mills, your lumber mills, your plywood mills, uh, your rice mills, uh, things of this nature than any other port in the state. We are the largest rice exporting port in the world. We handle about uh, 650, 700,000 tons of bagged rice a year through this facility, serving all of the mills in the state as well as some in, in Texas, in East Texas. Uh, we are a major exporter of line aboard, uh, which is manufactured at a number of paper mills. Uh, at we also serve a number of the major industries in this area. Petroleum coke is a large uh, product cargo that we handle through here. All of the coke that is produced by city service and Conoco here is shipped through the port of Lake Charles. We have the only wood chip exporting port anywhere on the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we ship wood chips uh, that come to us from the mills in Louisiana, South Arkansas, and East Texas to the Scandinavian countries where they use the longleaf pine wood chips to blend in with their wood chips and making a real high quality paper. Uh, many people are not aware that this is being done, but we ship it out in quantities of 35,000 tons of wood chips at a time, so that's a lot of wood chips. Uh, we have the only liquefied natural gas uh, regasification terminal anywhere in the south. Uh, there's only two others in the United States. Uh, our facility will go on stream in June of this year. Trunkline LNG, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Panhandle Easton, is building a $500 million regasification terminal on port land on our industrial canal and this will mean many more jobs in this area and also would will put a lot of natural gas into their system uh, once this goes on stream. In other words, then, it's truly an international port. Oh, yes. For many years, Lake Charles sat here and accepted the reputation of being a rice port and seemed to be satisfied with it, but not anymore. We have greatly expanded the types of cargo that we handle. We have uh, more than triple the cargo that is being shipped through the Port of Lake Charles in the past six years. And we're trying to serve the many needs that are here. We are a major exporting port uh, on the Gulf Coast. What is in the future for the Port of Lake Charles? Well, we've been concentrating very heavily in the past year on bringing new industry into this particular area. The Port of Lake Charles, or the Lake Charles Harbor Terminal District, as we are officially known, uh, covers about 203 square miles here in uh, Calcutta Parish. And the port owns considerable land uh, on the ship channel, on the industrial canal, and we have been developing this land. Uh, we have right now $98 million worth of new industry that the port's bringing into the area this year. Uh, we are completing the $500 million trunk line uh, facility, as I mentioned. We built the trailer marine transport facility, which was finished just a few months ago. And we're working on two others now that could uh, run into the billions uh, if they are put together, as we hope to be able to do. So we're really concentrated on what we look at as permanent type cargo, rather than having something that just passes through the port and you hope to have it again sometime. We're trying to build industry here, or production type of manufacturing uh, plants and whatnot. They will be here for many years and we'll be able to handle their products in and out uh, for a long period of time. 
With that relatively short distance to the Gulf, Lake Charles has become one of the leaders in attracting industry. In the past 18 years, industrial construction here has totaled about $2.2 billion. And there is no sign the economy here will slow down. Government leaders are proud of how their city continues over the years to lead the state in economic growth and potential. The city of Lake Charles is about 113 years old, and of course it started out primarily as a, a lumber city, lumber and agriculture, and then of course uh, approximately uh, 1930 the port was opened, which was a great boom to the city. Uh, but then in, uh, in the early 40s, during World War II, we, we gained all of these petrochemical uh, plants just across the lake, and of course that was a terrific gain for us. So, uh, but right now we have what I think is a very stable economy. We have a goodly amount of petrochemical business in the area, uh, along with the port and uh, of course the plants. Uh, and we're still uh, pretty well involved in agriculture and timber uh, in the city. Well, I, I hope that statement you made is true, that we do have one of the highest growth rates. Uh, the fact is we're having problems right now, as everyone is, with the Census Bureau. We just don't feel that they did uh, a proper job in counting the people because they don't show uh, uh, any increase in our city, and, and we feel certain that there is. But, uh, gee, yes, we've had a lot of growth here uh, over the past uh, 20 years, and and certainly the future is very bright. Uh, as I mentioned, with the port and a good stable economy, uh, I, I see a very bright future for our city of Lake Charles. We have what I think is a first class uh, recreational uh, program. Uh, and in addition, of course, as you well know, we're situated on a beautiful lake uh, and we have a numerous sales boats and uh, people are water skiing and of course we've got Undoubtedly, the finest duck hunting area around Lake Charles in the entire world. We, we have some excellent fishing onshore and offshore. So, uh, uh, and of course, numerous golf courses. It's just, you name it, and we've got it. Everything except skiing on the slopes. We don't have any mountains. Senator Newman, let's say I'm an outsider. I want you to describe the city of Lake Charles to me. What kind of city is it? Well, certainly I'm somewhat biased, being from this area and representing this area. I represent approximately three-fourths of Calcasieu and all of Cameron Parish. Our city here, Lake Charles, of course, as you can see immediately outside this window where the building we're at today, we're sitting on the lake. Uh, we think we have a tremendous asset in being located on uh, the lake of Lake Charles. In addition to that, we have a deep-sea port. It's the only one between New Orleans and Houston. Across the river, we have a tremendous industrial complex, which brings in a lot of business, a lot of work, um, the oil industry work to our community. The port, likewise, to the south of the city is in developing it into a huge, massive industrial complex. There's been uh, uh, some property that has been uh, acquired by the Port of Lake Charles, and they are now developing that into an industrial complex. So we find the complex not only on the west side of the river, we're actually finding it to the south of the city. We have also a rather large farming community to the east, uh, the rice industry, the soybean industry, the cattle industry to the, to the south in Cameron Parish. So we feel as though we're sort of all around uh, uh, the downtown Lake Charles area. We have a tremendous complex that's going up, uh, a number of new buildings. As a matter of fact, the Calcasieu Marine National Bank in excess of 20, 21 stories is going up. Uh, so we think we have a lot to offer. It's a growing area. What do you see in the future for this area? I see that the industry will continue to develop here. Uh, on the west side of the river, it's pretty well established, but I see it starting to expand towards the northwest corner of the, the river. Definitely to the south in the industrial complex and uh, in the industrial canal, it's gonna be developing. I think you'll see more business-related businesses locating here, especially with the development of the downtown area. For a long time, it was sort of down and out. We have a lot of new complexes going up, uh, multi-story, uh, 20, 25-story buildings, uh, 10, 15, 20-story buildings. We have quite a few, and we have about uh, four or five major ones under construction now are recently completed. I think the availability of space, uh, the manpower, uh, the potential for labor, uh, and the expertise that we have in this area in construction and uh, management, I think, is going to help to draw people. I think Lake Charles is going to continue to grow, uh, hopefully so. 
What about uh, LPB, Louisiana Public Broadcasting in Lake Charles? Oh, I'm, I'm thrilled about that. As a matter of fact, uh, I wish we'd have had it years prior. I'm somewhat biased, as I indicated before the program. I have two daughters, uh, ages six and eight, and I think uh, it's very, very important for the youth and the young people of our state. I think it's going to have a tremendous impact on the Lake Charles area. Uh, at present, we have only one television station. Uh, I'm a type of person that likes to think competition is good. Uh, whether it be in any type of media or any type of business, competition is good. Uh, I think that the LPB coming into the Lake Charles area is going to be a tremendous asset for us, and I know I welcome it. Uh, in my work in the Senate this past session, uh, there was a lot of inquiries about the funding. We had some senators who were quite concerned about the potential and the usefulness of public education television. Well, I welcome it. I've seen it work in the past. We have a service coming into the Lake Charles area by cable from Houston, but I think we need to bring in our culture, our uh, Acadiana culture, uh, our language is the French language, and, and a lot that we have in Louisiana, and I think it's going to be a plus, a tremendous plus, and I welcome it, and I know the people of Lake Charles welcome it to our area. Now let's go on a tour of our new Louisiana public broadcasting city that will be served from this tower. Le Centre Civique du Lake Charles costs $17 million and is one of the finest convention entertainment and tourist centers in the state. A 22-acre park is adjacent and provides tennis courts, bicycle trails, and is imaginatively and attractively landscaped. The Burton Memorial Coliseum was built at a cost of eight million dollars and was designed primarily for rodeo, stock, and agricultural events. The Civic Center can accommodate up to 7,500 persons and the Coliseum up to 6,500. This is the Louisiana Freedom Tower containing 46 aluminum birdhouses. This fantastic tower just west of the Civic Center was dedicated to the memory of the Louisiana servicemen who died in Vietnam. It was constructed by the Young Men's Business Club. The tower is the only one of its kind in the world and can house more than 5,000 Purple Martins. Recreational facilities abound throughout the Lake Charles area. This is North Beach, the only inland beach between Los Angeles, California and Jacksonville, Florida. It's a wonderful place for swimming, sunbathing, boating, water skiing, picnicking. The city's 561 acres of parks and playgrounds are supplemented by Sam Houston Jones State Park, 10 miles north of here. At the park, you'll find over 1,000 magnificently wooded acres fronting the Calcasieu River. Because Lake Charles is so near the Gulf, just south of the city are deep marshes providing the finest in duck and goose hunting. Hundreds of thousands of acres of marshland provide haven for millions of migrating duck and geese. For the more adventuresome, Deep sea fishing is just a short boat trip away. Earlier in the program, I mentioned the historic days of Lake Charles. Well, memories of those days are housed in the Imperial Calcasieu Museum. Records and exhibits depicting the history of Lake Charles, including that of pirate Jean Lafitte, who it is said did harbor his ships in local waters. Rumors still abound of buried treasure nearby. The museum is the site of the Charles Salier Oak, under which Salier built his home so many years ago. The first week in May sees a unique celebration observing the official opening of the Southwest Louisiana water sports season in Lake Charles. It's known as Contraband Day when citizens lend color to the festivities dressed as buccaneers in elaborate costumes. Events include power and sailboat races, water ski shows, carnivals, 
fireworks. And not to forget the French influence, a Cajun day. Just a short distance to the west of Lake Charles from September to July, you can feel the thunder at beautiful Delta Downs racetrack. They're on. On the outside, Amber Host for the early lead. Now, Lady Eden Rock has moved up. On the inside, draft policy is next, then congenial rules. Let's point out that other communities in Calcasieu Parish will also be served by Louisiana Public Broadcasting such as the town of Sulphur. It was here that the mineral that gave the town its name was discovered in 1905. Until 1914, 75% of the nation's sulphur was supplied from right here. The product was so pure, 99%, that it was put on the market unrefined. Alas, all good things must end, the sulfur field played out in 1924. The town of Jennings to the east of Lake Charles has the distinction of being the site of the first discovery of petroleum in Louisiana. That was in 1901. The town was first settled in 1884, named for Jennings Macomb, the engineer in charge of building the Southern Pacific Railway lines in southwest Louisiana. This is McNeese State University. Founded as a junior college division of Louisiana State University in 1939, McNeese is today a fully accredited university operating under the Louisiana Board of Trustees. McNeese State University has a very unique history. Uh, it was founded in 1939 by act of the legislature, but uh, actually uh, they attempted to build the college in 1938, they really, the Cattlemen's Association wanted a rodeo arena. And when they went before the legislature in 1938, the rodeo arena was turned down. So they went back before the legislature in 1939 and added a college to the rodeo arena and got it approved. So they got their rodeo arena and the college at the same time, and it was called Lake Charles Junior College. In 1940, Governor Sam Jones renamed the college John McNeese junior college. And of course, John McNeese was a great educator, first superintendent of Calcasieu Parish. He also fought in the Battle of Gettysburg and was a cattleman. And so we get our cattleman's uh, cowboys named uh, uh, in a real good natural way. Uh, later on, our college was made a four-year school, 1952, by act of the legislature. And then in 1970, it was turned into a university. And, of course, its growth has been from approximately 134 students in 1940 to approximately 6,000 at this time. It has been a unique history that is uh, fascinating when you study all aspects of it. But uh, a lot of people don't know who John McNeese was, and he was really the greatest educator in the state of Louisiana. So McNeese is an educational institution named after a great educator. Well, of course, at first, Lake Charles, this area of Lake Charles was undeveloped. The gravel street out here was Rhine Street, and the dirt street behind us was Common Street. Right now, we're totally surrounded, and we're a suburban college, almost an urban institution. So it's been a tremendous development. It's uh, the payroll for 550 employees and 6,000 students is spread throughout this university, throughout this area and particularly in the city of Lake Charles. It's probably the largest single industry in Lake Charles, although some of the plants might be larger. The budget for McNeese, including the student fees, not counting the money students spend, is $20 million. So f assuming that that turns over five times, as some people have said, that's uh, $100 million, and that doesn't count what each student spends on their own, which is approximately a hundred dollars a semester and some say even a hundred a month so it's big industry we have a good rapport with businesses throughout the area that we serve and when i say the area we serve i go from houston to new orleans through baton rouge up into north louisiana uh, all of our graduates are able to get good jobs the people that hire them come back for more jobs and of course right in immediately in lake charles we furnish most of the 
chemist for this petrochemical industrial plants that are here. We furnish many of the engineers, many of the business graduates, and uh, quite a few other technical people that these plants readily absorb. And uh, uh, young people can get a job in the city or they can go out and usually they all find work in the field that they studied and not having to take secondary jobs. Approximately 80% of our students come within, I'd say, 70 miles of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, we do draw quite a few from East Texas, Port Arthur, Beaumont, Jasper, Silsby, Orange, Texas, and we draw some from Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and North Louisiana. Another small group, but a notable group, is that we draw some oh, three or four hundred students from foreign countries. We have some 20 foreign countries represented on the campus. And I think we have all of the states of the Union represented. It's not, I'm not sure about Alaska, but we have all of the lower 48 represented, except possibly a few western states. These statistics change so fast that I'm not sure right now, but we're, we're a regional institution in that the bulk of our students come from a uh, area near the university, but we do reach out to other areas. I see a slow, steady growth. I don't see a mushrooming situation because I don't see Lake Charles getting in a position, say, of Houston or a city like that, but I think it'll get in a position where it'll have a steady 10%, 15% growth every decade. I think our college will follow the same line. I look for us to have 7,000 to 8,000 students during the decade of the 80s and possibly go up to 10,000 during the decade of the 90s. And that's the way I, I look for the area to grow. We're not a rapidly growing area, but we're a steadily growing area. And really, it's really the best kind of growth because we're able to take care of the people better and not be totally overcrowded with poor streets, poor facilities, and just have to find a way to get around. So this is Lake Charles the newest link in the ever-expanding chain of Louisiana public broadcasting. 25 and a half square miles with about 81,000 people. The parish seat of Calcasieu Parish, which has close to 156,000 persons. Lake Charles, take time to enjoy it.